I want to begin by recalling something I saw six years ago, almost to the day. In 2008, 2008 March, I passed through London. And in the Heathrow Airport, I saw an ad by IBM. That's what it says. Stop selling what you have and start selling what they need. And I fell in love, just love at first sight. I never forgot this. And you might wonder why, but because at that very moment I said, this is what we have been doing to our teachers. For our teachers, for math teachers, we have been selling them what we have. We have higher math, we have everything. What do they need? Haven't thought about that yet. Uh, definitely, that's, a, that's the easy answer. They, know, they should know how to teach pedagogically. But there's something perhaps just as important, if not, if not more. They need a correct version of the mathematics they have to teach. What do I mean by that? When they were students, I think all of you who are teachers here would concur with me. Uh, when, you went through, when, you, when you went through K-12, you somehow knew that you were sold a bill of goods. And when it's your turn to teach, you would like to do a little better. And they have not equipped you with the necessary equipment. We have let our teachers down. We never consider what they need. We just sell them what we have got. So the mathematics that has been taught in the schools, I call it collectively uh, TSM, textbook school mathematics, meaning that this is the sort of intersection of all the generic uh, school textbook series that you have, we have out there. For the last 40 years, they have a lot in common, contrary to what you believe math was and everything. That means nothing. What they have in common is much more than the differences. From a, mathemat from a mathematician's point of view, uh, there's very certain things stand out right away. They have hardly ever given any definitions. So if you have any doubts about that, ask yourself, I mean, I don't, I don't mean, well, even mathematicians, what is a fraction? And don't come up with equivalent classes of all the pairs of integers. Mm -hmm. not, that's not for K to 12. And so on. So the presentation is always fragmented, sound bites, no coherence whatsoever. And you like to blur the line between what you approved and what you think might be true, and there's some argument for it. That's not good for mathematics. And of course, there's a total lack of precision. That kind of mathematics, I think you agree, is not learnable. So I'd like to uh, put it into context. Uh, what is it? So you might, some of you might have doubts, of course. So let me, I'll give you I have eight examples. I don't have time to go through all of them. Uh, I'll give you four of them, and then anyway, we'll see how it goes. So the first one is that eighth grade team's question. Eighth grade, don't forget, this is not fifth grade. This is eighth grade team's question. It says, one third minus was on fourth. What is it? And 32% of our students said, you saw that. And 26 said is the other. Now, anyone with any common sense would know that it's not true. So 30% got it right. Now, 30% eighth graders could answer that question. That's scary. Uh, just for comparison, Taipei is 82% got it right. And the darling of the present day education, uh, Finland, 16% of the eighth graders got it right. So you can say, well, no need to despair. There are lots of people worse than us. But that's not the right spirit, is it? <laughs> yeah? So we're supposed to get our students to learn how to make sense of things in front of them. They haven't done that. So I would say that maybe most, but let's say be conservative, and most, many of our high school students don't know why minus 7 divided by minus 3 equals 7 over 3. Uh, so that what well, they would say something like this. When you multiply negative times, maybe negative is positive. So it, go, it stands to reason that what's good for multiplication, good for division, that works too. Right? <laughs> so, so we are supposed to get our students to reason abstractly, and that goes out the window. Let's write division of fractions. Yeah, that's a favorite question. So let's, we want to uh, talk about, um, let's see. 
uh, 5 divided by 3 over 4. So how does it do it? So the, the, they are taught like this. Uh, 0 to 5, that's 5. Yeah? You carve out how many portions of 3 fourths. And I've done it for you. That's conceptual understanding. And you have, after six such carvings, you're left with one half, which you cannot go any further. So you say, uh, so this is this divided by that is six uh, half. Now I don't advise that you do that, but I'm telling you this is what they're taught. What they're taught. And so now you reason while well, you guess. That's the key word. One half is sort of like two thirds times three fourths. Therefore, the answer for this division is six and two thirds. Great. Except what you do with a fraction like this, 2 11th divided by 81 over 29th, that's a typical division. Right? Most divisions that you see are going to be like this. And after all that, we, we, you, you want students who have a framework to critique this kind of reasoning and say, it's faulty. Where do they get this framework? TSM does not give that. Last, let's try uh, a typical, uh, we'll call it rate problem. Helena, Helena runs uh, 10 minutes, one mile, 20 minutes, two miles, 30 minutes, three miles. So how many miles does she run in 25 minutes? Well, proportional reasoning, yeah? the unit rates, you know. So in one, 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 ten, 10 minutes, you run one mile. In each minute, you run one tenth of a mile. So 25 minutes, it's that many miles. Yeah? Modeling, good modeling, except She's an Olympic runner, and she was training, and she, she didn't run at constant speed. <laughs> now, anyone who's a professional runner knows that I'm being realistic. How you train, you run longer distance, double, half a mile, about 800 meters, and then you run as fast as you can, and then you rest, recuperate, and run again. So this is her routine for every 10 minutes, and therefore, when you think about it like this, you can take a simple piece of paper and do it. In 25 minutes, she would cover about 2.7 miles and not 2.5. And so now, so you say, why can't proportional reasoning work for this problem? Now, I'm not, not going to give you the rest of the uh, examples. Uh, <laughs> but I want to put in the context, what's so bad about TSM? What is wrong with TSM? Uh, this TSM, the, the role play, why it plays an important role in, in, in education of teachers is that you have to look at the life cycle of a teacher. In K-12, they learn TSM. They go to college, when they go to college, they expect a better treatment, yes? They learn something and go back to do better. But our, as I said, our universities do not believe in that. They say, you come, you know your, 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 your uh, K-12 math, we teach you something better. Or when you actually, when our universities actually take the trouble to teach our teachers, they repeat the same TSM because, well, I don't want to go into the reason, but that's what happens. And of course, pedagogical strategies to implement what you learn in TSM. In other words, this is a TS, TSM soup that's repeated over and over again. So now it's their turn to teach. What do they do? TSM is all you know, and then with TSM is what you're going to give to your, back to your students. You have this vicious cycle that re recycles this body of knowledge. And therefore, the next generation, well, that's a typo. Next generation of teachers, they get TSM, and therefore, when they go to college, don't learn anything, go back to teach, the same thing over again. So now we have in the Common Core era, and our teachers are being asked to implement the CSS um, Common Core Math Standards, and unfortunately CSSM, to a large extent, perhaps not completely, yes, it's produced by committee, so it's free of, it's largely free of TSM, and if you only know TSM, you're being asked to teach something that's not TSM, what, what are you going to do? We are, they are asked to do something they're not equipped with, uh, to carry it out. And this is criminal, yes? If a general does that, he'll be court-martialed. But our universities thrive. They do it time and time again every year. And our math community really, really should not be proud of this. 
we leave this thing, we say it's not worthy of our attention, we don't want to pay attention to it. So we have to do better. I think we have to bear down and start to teach our teachers something that's correct and not hear them so that they have hope to go back to build up a better next generation. So I leave with two passing parting uh, thoughts. One is that TSM, textbook school mathematics. Why don't you just rewrite the textbooks? I'll let you debate this question. <laughs> the second question is that it's not just teachers. This affects our math educators. It's a lot of, there's a lot at stake here. Thank you very much. In spite of all the efforts, um, I have to say this very carefully. Now, I'm officially somewhat related to a textbook writing uh, project. Uh, it's called the Engage NY. And whatever I say should be dissociated from that project because I don't know enough about that project to say anything. <laughs> so other than that, so Looking at all the available evidence, I don't see that we have succeeded in carrying out, in writing a series of acceptable textbooks. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an unbelievable blemish on the foremost technological nation in the world. So, I, so it is the lack of success. It can be done, obviously, and I still have some hope that something can come out of this present attempt at uh, uh, implement, implementing the Common Core. But until it's done, well, there's no evidence, then nothing mm -hmm. you can say. And of course, now we are, we're not talk, putting our hopes on new textbook series. Uh, but existing textbook series, I would say that I com have completely given up, and maybe all of you feel the same way. Okay. <laughs> I want people to realize that Reversing, I'm not reversing, replacing a teacher's knowledge of TSM with acceptable, reasonable mathematics, and I think about great, just, just acceptable, reasonable mathematics. That's something extremely hard. Try getting someone who has been smoking for 13 years to not smoke. Start with that one. And now we're talking about someone who has been miseducated for 13 years, you think one semester would do it? Two semesters? Three semesters? It's a lifelong task. But, but I have a question. Okay. Um, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> yes. What you and Herb talked about, about, hmm, I can speak. Um, clearly, you want colla uh, collaboration. Um, School of Education and other things. I, my conception of the School of educa Education is, uh, Perhaps it's just peculiar to myself. Uh, I think people always refer to the math department, at least on campus at Berkeley, is, as a service department, meaning that we serve other departments. It seems to me that School of Education is the quintessential service department, meaning that you really should make available, make use of all the expertise in the other departments in order to produce a product that you're teaching. You're helping teachers to teach. Thank you. Um, oh, I've heard. We're trying to help mm -hmm. teachers, uh, prospective teachers, how to, uh, help them how to teach. But ultimately, I think they have to teach something. They can't just teach. So that something is the knowledge that those prospective teachers have to get, get from chemistry, physics, English, mathematics, whatever. And the School of Education should have an open door policy, it seems to me, that welcomes all of their input, 
have a revolving door so that can, people can come in out. Uh, sort of like biochemistry is not just biologists and chemists operating in different parts of the campus and to confer from time to time. It's biochemistry. They know both. They can make decisions on both, and they are competent enough to do both. And ultimately, I think the School of Education would, in an ideal world, would evolve into many, many sub-departments of mathematics education, physics education, science education. In other words, these are people who know mathematics and education rather than a group of educators in Tolman Hall and a group of mathematicians in Evans Hall. Uh, that's my ideal picture. And I, uh,